Hello and welcome to the presentation on history at A-level at Coldview School. I'm Mr Rhodes and for the next few minutes I'd just like to introduce you to some of the themes that you could be studying should you choose history to study in year 12 and 13. Um, I'd like to say a big hello to year 11 uh, who are watching this, whether you're studying at the moment at Coldview or in fact whether you're from another school and you're thinking about coming over to join us uh, in years 12 and 13 and I have to say we've had a number of people that have done that in previous years and I think they've enjoyed the experience. Okay so before we get uh, looking at some of the information about the course I've just put up some images here on the first slide and you'll notice to start with that they're photographs and there's a good reason for that and it's because the history we study at A level at Coldview is based on modern history. And not only that, but you'll notice that some of the topics that appear in these photographs, some of the themes, are very controversial. Okay, I'm sure that some of you are familiar with some of the images and certainly some of the people involved, although you might be pushing it a bit to get Bismarck on the top left-hand corner there. Um, the Sun's headline, Gotcha, relates to the Falklands War and attitudes that were around at the time about the British involvement in uh, the South Atlantic against the Argentinians over the Falkland Islands back in the 1980s. This at the time provoked a lot of controversy and it was reflected in the newspaper coverage. Still to this day people argue and debate about it and this is one of the things that I wanted to flag up straight away that in history when we study we're not just dealing with the facts and information that we can gather and trying to learn and process and remember them. The key thing is what we do with those facts. Um, we're looking for those facts to be used to form opinions, uh, define what we think about the, the matter under consideration, argue points, defend points of view, question other people's points of view and reach a conclusion. And actually that's the fun bit of the history course in that I'm trying to encourage you, we're all trying to encourage you to get involved in debate, arguments, on an informed basis of course, around the topics that we study. Let's have a look at what we actually do study and how we study it over the next two years. There are three units of study. There's a breadth study, which is worth 40% of the final mark. The breadth study covers a large chunk of time. There's a depth study, also worth 40% of the final mark, and that covers a smaller amount of time in more detail. There's essentially coursework, which is referred to as an extended essay or a non-examined assessment, the NEA. It gets marked by us, it gets moderated by the exam board, it's sent away to be checked, and it's a 3,000 to 4,000 4, word essay that you undertake during year 13. The breadth and the depth studies are taught across the two years by different teachers. So basically one teacher would take you for the breadth study, and one teacher would take you for the depth study. In year 12, you have two lessons a week on the breadth study, two lessons a week on the depth study, four lessons in total. The examination that we do is in May. Now that's the AS level external exam. And unless you're going to drop history at the end of year 12, you don't need uh, particularly a grade at AS. However, we decided to still put students in for the exam as a real-time practice in order uh, to give you some good experience of what an A-level exam looks like. It's very similar in format. The difference is just the length um, in terms of it's similar to the A-level exam at the end of year 13. Um, and it's one hour and 30 minutes. In year 13, two lessons on the breadth study again with the breadth study teacher, two lessons on the depth study with the depth study teacher. And you have an additional lesson once a week, which we devote to working on your coursework on the NEA. Um, and that we there's an expectation that students will work on that in their own time. OK, so the year 13 examination, the final examination is in June, and this is an advanced level paper of two hours and 30 minutes. It's an hour more than a TAS. And the extra bit, if you like, is to cover the extra content that we do in year 13. So in year 13, you're examined on what we did in year 12, as well as year 13. So your AS exam doesn't go towards or doesn't count towards your final grade. In year 13, 
um, basically we're using the content from the previous two years, not just the year 13 year, but the two years to form that examination at the end. Here's uh, some information about the content coming up then. We know about the format of the exam. Um, you've, we're using AQA as our examination board, and in case you're interested and you want to do a bit of digging on that, um, it's the syllabus 704.1, 704.2. relates to AS, 704.2 for A level. Um, and there's a, a couple of the books that we use. The Germany textbook, the main textbook that we use, they've been specifically written, that and the British book, for the A level, AS and A level course. Um, and you can see there that they, they're your sort of go to books as well as a schema work to help us guide, be guided through the course. And there's um, an example of a, a guidebook. We do our own guidebook on the uh, coursework on the third component on the NEA, but there's one there too. Okay, so the Brett study for Germany, 1871 to 1991. You can see there, the unit considers the development of modern Germany from Bismarck, bringing the country together in 1871, through the controversial times of the Kaiser before World War I, the devastating impact of the defeat in the war in World War I that hindered the Weimar Republic, which some of you who are doing Germany now, of course, will know full well about, the rise and fall of the Nazis, the post-war splitting of Germany into two, and the economic and political rise of Germany as a force from the 1950s to the present day. It's an amazing journey. Um, my granddad was, I've always said this, my granddad was born in 1897 in England and died in 1976. Had he been born in Germany in 1896 and died in 1976 in Germany, he would have witnessed a tremendous chunk of history um, that shaped the modern world. You know, the situation in Germany before World War I was a changing, dynamic uh, set of events. World War I was colossal for Germany devastated the country, left millions dead, millions of others starving, or with the Spanish flu, with the guy you can see in the picture there, the Kaiser, having to abdicate and leave the country. And in the 1920s, there was turmoil, some of which you're doing about now, of course, as you know, which unfortunately led to the rise of the Nazis, and there's a picture from the Nuremberg rallies uh, in the 1930s. And, you know, once the Nazis have been defeated, Germany splits in two, and half of Germany is run by the very people the Nazis have been fighting against, the communist Russians, and the other half, basically for a time anyway, are run by America, France, and Britain. Um, things got back on an even keel, okay, Germany picked itself up with help from its allies, who became its allies, Britain, France, and Germany, after World War II, uh, so much so that they ended up hosting the Olympics in 1972, and there's a scene from the Olympics, believe it or not, where there was a terrorist uh, outrage and one of the things we'll be studying is modern day terrorism as some of that happened in Germany back in the 1970s. It's a fascinating story um, and it's got its ups and downs um, and I think you'll enjoy it. We consider the debates, the controversies, the changes and the patterns of continuity in this troubled nation. Okay, the depth study, uh, Britain 1951 to 2007 most of your folks at home and grandparents and me and Mr. James and various other people, not so much Mr. Johnston, I have to say, Mr. Marston, but certainly plenty of people in school have lived through uh, this time period in this country and know a bit about it. Okay. We consider the main political, economic and social developments over what I think is a fascinating 56 year stretch of modern British history. The course starts with the situation after the war and the roles of Churchill, Eden, Macmillan, very famous conservative politicians in the 1950s and 60s. We also consider how things change and how Britain changes from being a, a world power into something less than that in the 1960s and 70s. We look at Labour Party coming to power in 1964. We analyse the turmoil in the 1970s and the changes that are brought in by Margaret Thatcher for the Conservatives in the 1980s and more lately Tony Blair. All right, and what that does to British politics and society, and we look at education, immigration, and Europe. And anybody who wants to get a head start on this uh, could do worse than actually watching The Crown. And uh, that follows the story, really, from the monarchy point of view, with some sort of artistic license involved, but it's worth a watch if you can. 
um, you'll get a good heads up on some of the main themes that we study on our British course. The NEA. Here's something. You get to choose a, an area of study. You get to choose a question. You pick a question. You write your own question. We get that sent to the board. Usually they approve it. And then you write an answer. And the idea is that on the topic that you've chosen, on the question that you're looking at, you write an answer. And part of that answer is reviewing the work of leading historians who've written about it, OK, who may be debating and arguing um, about the topic that you're studying. And we also look at some extracts from the time, contemporary extracts, to help us understand it a bit better. Doing this really equips them, that's you if you're students, that's them if you're the parents or family members of the students, for the type of reading, research and writing that will feature at degree level at university, as it involves looking at the debates surrounding the area chosen. Basically, it's a dummy run at what you're going to be doing at university. In the past, for the NEA, our students have looked at areas that really interest them. Henry VIII and the Reformation, the English Civil War, French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, the abolition of slavery are just a few of the ones that they've done. OK, the choice is yours. Year 13, examinations. OK, let's skip to the good bit then. So each A-level examination paper is two and a half hours in length at the end of year 13. So there's a two and a half hour paper on Britain and a two and a half hour paper on Germany. In each of those papers, there are three extracts, three statements number of lines long to analyze to determine which is the more convincing about the topic under consideration so you might get a speech given by a politician you might get a section of a newspaper article uh, you might get another speech and you have to determine which of those is on the british side of the course actually is more accurate in portraying what's going on okay and you bring all your skills to bear that you're studying at the moment on the germany course when we're looking at Things like, you know, can we trust the writer? What are they trying to get at? Uh, when are they writing? All those sorts of questions that we bring in. OK, we take it a stage further at A-level. On the Germany side, we look at three historians who've written about Germany, more or less now, looking back. And we consider who's got it right about the topic that they're commenting on in terms of what we know. What can we bring to the table to put into support or to challenge what those writers are saying? OK, so that's your extract. Now, we work at length on that in year 12 and 13 to get you built up to a position where you're confident to take them on. There are three other essay questions and students, that's you, will select two of those questions to write on each paper. So you get a choice of three, you do two plus the extract and you spend about 50 minutes on each of those three tasks, the one extract question and the two essays. So what's the future in history? It's all in the past, isn't it? Aha, you say. Right, bad joke. However, history offers many opportunities in careers, such as in law, journalism, business management, administration, and any job which involves analysing, evaluating, and using information. The skills built up over the two years include handling facts and opinions, determining what's important, arguing and defending a point of view, scrutinising information and reading between the lines, building up a case, learning which questions to ask, and thinking about the aims, methods, successes and failures of people and events in the past. These are all key skills to do with handling information that you're going to need going forward in whatever job you do. We're a very much information-driven society now, and we need to pick our way through what's right and what's wrong, who's telling the truth and who isn't, uh, what's important and what's not. And actually, history gives you those skill sets to be able to use in the future. If you want any information, have a look at this, contact me or any of us actually in the history department. And also you can check the AQA website under History A level. You get much more detail there on the programmes of study, schemes of work and past papers. Please feel free as well to talk to any of our current year 12 and 13 students who think, you know, I'm not I'm not kidding when I say they're enjoying the course and will do very well in it. So we can arrange this for you in year 11 if you'd like to get in touch with anybody to discuss it further. Thank you very much for listening.